Well, we're joined now from Jerusalem by the Israeli Prime Minister's spokesman, Mark Regev. Mark Regev, the operation that you're engaged in is Protective Edge, and its stated purpose is to protect Israeli civilians. Uh, how does killing children on a beach contribute to that purpose? Well, it doesn't. You have sophisticated ships offshore there with some of the best and most uh, forensic sighting and uh, visual capacity. It's pretty hard to confuse boys running around with a ball on a beach. Well, let me be clear here. The, the story with these four boys is a tragedy. You can't look at those pictures and, and not be moved. But let's be clear. The Israeli military does not target civilians. It does not target children. And I don't believe the person who, uh, if it was an Israeli, who fired and, and killed those four boys knew that they were children. The number of children killed so far has reached somewhere around 50. And, and uh, the vast majority of all the people who've died are civilians. We get to our second incident today, where our own correspondent witnessed yet another shell coming in from the sea and uh, hitting uh, uh, three boys, one of whom uh, escaped actual injury, was merely shell-shocked. The father was injured. The two boys were injured. More civilians, more sighting, more error. That's the nature of war. That's what you're up to, war. And it, it, you seem to be happy for it to, frankly, well, if it results in dead children, dead women, that's it. War is a terrible thing. Anyone who's been in the military, anyone who's been in a war zone, your reporters who cover war know that better than anyone else. But let's be clear, we tried to end it all yesterday. Uh, there was a ceasefire proposal on the table by the Egyptians, a su proposal supported by the Arab League, not known to be particularly friendly to Israel, supported by the United Nations. We supported that ceasefire proposal. We ceased all our operations against terrorist targets in Gaza for some six hours. And the reason the conflict is continuing today and tonight as we speak is because Hamas said no to that ceasefire proposal. Hamas, in both word, they rejected it, and indeed they continued firing rockets at our people, at rain barraging our cities. So well, I, mean, I the think Hamas, the people of the Gaza Hamas are version angry. here is that they were never spoken to about this because, of course, the Egyptians won't speak to them precisely because they see them as allied with the Muslim Brotherhood, whose uh, people they've locked up in their thousands in their jails. Hamas had an opportunity for a ceasefire, let's be clear, and I'm sure your reporters will verify everything I'm about to say. They announced the ceasefire at 10 p.m. local time. We had 11 hours to get ready for the ceasefire. It was all public. Israel, the security cabinet, met first thing in the morning, and we agreed to the ceasefire. We ceased all hostile activity, and we actually, almost for seven hours, though Hamas rockets continued to rain in on our cities, we did not respond because we thought maybe Hamas needs a bit of time to get its act together, to enforce the ceasefire, but they nevertheless chose to reject a UN Arab League-sponsored proposal mm. for, a peace, for a peacefire. What does that mean? Is, is the Arab League working for Israel? Let's be serious for a moment here. Well, let's be serious and uh, move on from children to geriatrics and to people with paralysis. Lying in a hospital at 3.30 in the morning, the El Wafa Hospital. What was the point of bombing the El Wafa Hospital, for goodness sake? Unless I'm misheard, and maybe it's a different hospital, but your reporter said he was interviewing one of the medical staff and he heard outgoing rockets from the immediate vicinity. No, that was a different hospital, Those I'm are afraid. That was a different hospital. No, but yes, but I, I think it, I understand I said that. It could be not the same hospital I said that. But, but that shows the dilemma Israel is facing. Hamas is a, a brutal terrorist organization that has no qualms whatsoever about mm. shooting rockets into Israel from hospitals, schools, mosques, the middle of civilian neighborhoods. We had 100 rockets today hmm. on our cities. Over the last few days since this crisis started, we've had some 1,000 rockets raining hmm. down on our cities trying to kill our people. Well, now, I just what are heard our from my correspondent to give while them you were that question, it is indeed the right hospital, but the, he was there and the rockets were near the hospital, but not actually in, in the premises. And you bombed the premises. Well, once again, once again, hostile fire, and we were acting to try to neutralize the hostile fire. And I think the question has to be asked here of Hamas. Why are you deliberately embedding your the civilian population, shooting your rockets, 
trying to kill our civilians using Gaza's population as your human shield. But it's, Mr. It's, Regev, it's, it's it is Israeli acceptable. forces too who are doing exactly the same thing. You are deliberately no, targeting neighborhoods in which you no, know there no, are no. women and children. And if your sightings no. can't see boys playing football on a huge wide beach, then there's something wrong with your equipment. Well, let's be clear here. Uh, if you want to go back to the beach, one of the reporters who I've, I've read all the material that's come out actually said he thought when he heard the explosion, it was outgoing rockets. And of course, it wasn't in the end, but that just shows that he knows that Hamas is mm. using these urban areas where civilians mm. are uh, uh, living their lives to shoot at us. Now, what's our dilemma? And I hope you'll let me answer this question. They are shooting at Israelis, bombarding our towns, trying to kill our people from urban areas. Now, we have an option not to do anything, to let them continue to shoot. And I, I think you'd understand that's not a real option. Or we can act as is surgically as is humanly possible in a very difficult combat situation. Well, and the most unfortunate thing do. is that despite the most sophisticated weaponry in the whole of the Middle East, you have proved a very serious point. You do not have the capacity. You cannot forensically attack an urban area without killing women and children. Ergo, you have factored in that you will kill children and women. The truth is, this is Hamas's decision for shooting at us from these urban areas. That is a war crime. They should not be, a, be doing that, and they should be condemned for it, and I trust you'll condemn them for doing it. Well, it's Why the United Nations. It's the United Nations hospitals. who have questioned whether what you're doing is perhaps a war crime. There are grave uncertainties no, no. about whether you are acting within no, I, the law. I, I oh, disagree. yes. Oh, yes. Three days ago, the United Nations questioned very urgently whether it was uh, Nadia Pile who actually raised this question of whether you are, in fact, targeting people and committing a war crime thereby. It's in the air. Can I tell you, I've heard, I've heard interviews with Palestinians in Gaza, and they've openly admitted they know that they are not the target of the Israeli raids, that the terrorists are the target. You had earlier in your piece, and I think it says a lot, and, and once again, my source here is Channel 4 News. You said that the Israelis were distributing leaflets, that this area will become a combat zone, and advising people to leave, and Hamas telling them, no, don't leave, stay, be a human shield for our rockets. That's the whole difference. We are trying as best as we can in a complex combat situation to be, uh, to avoid seeing Mr. innocent Regev, civilians caught up in the crossfire. Let, let me ask you a final question. You've tried uh, three wars. You've tried virtually everything with Hamas. You've tried everything with Gaza. You've besieged it for seven years. The people live an intolerable and ghastly life, and you know that better than anybody. Why don't you try one other thing? Talking. Why not talk? Why not be brave and talk directly with them? Why not? But, John, that's exactly what happened yesterday. There you was talked an directly with them? Proposal. You did not. See, you did not speak to well, them. You did not speak to them. And the Egyptians, who were the negotiators, did not speak to them. That is not speaking to Hamas. Why won't you speak with Hamas First directly? Of all, you haven't got the courage. That, I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. That's not sure. That's I spoke to all the relevant parties. And, uh, Mr. Regev, uh, we're going to have to leave it there. To check that. But there's the check. question in the air. Thank you very much for joining us. Christian. Well, you can follow Jonathan Miller's tweets and blogs from Gaza on our website at channel4.com news.